ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ವೇರ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಲವ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ವೇರ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಲವ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ವೇರ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಲವ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟಿ problems questions and difficulties arise when we lack love and therefore the teacher says why people are not able to apply their faculty of reason logic in a creative manner why intelligent people become more destructive than the average people if you see the terrorists or the naxalites they are not the kind of people who are unfit for everything no on the contrary they have got tremendous abilities then why this happens the only reason is this one ingredient in our personality and that is love and how the love can become perfect and uh, not perverted perverted love is because when the love is mistaken for the lust when we spell the word love as l u s t then the expression of that love is perversion and subsequent destruction therefore how can we have the perfect love which will not purify to perversion what is the way the way is given here ಏತಂ ವಿಭೂತಿ ಯೋಗ ಮಮ ಯೋ ವೇತಿ ತತ್ವ ಸಹ ಅವಿಕಂಪೇನ ಯೋಗೇನ ಯುಜ್ಯತೆ ನಾತ್ರ ಸಂಶಯ ಹಿ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ರೆಕಗ್ನೈಸ್ ದ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಈಸ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಸಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ divinity in everything and being his whole life will be divinized but when i am identified with the wrong identity with something very flimsy something very insignificant then the same becomes my expression therefore if we really want to lead our life more scientifically the first requirement is perform from the platform of right identity as to who we are this story comes in ramayan when you all know the ramayan i'll take only the pertinent part and bring the principle out when ramachandra bhagwan was asked to go to the forest and he goes and afterwards bharat comes back from himachal pradesh he had gone there to his mama's place and when he comes back and he finds out this is the condition so there he is very clear he said first i am related to the lord and for him the lord was his elder brother bhagwan ramachandra and he knew for certain that he is not a ordinary mortal born in this world in the same manner if our relationship with the world is at the divine level we will not be corrupted by the relations 
And when we don't get corrupted by the relations, we express the absolute through the relativity. And this is the teacher says again and again. When you have love for something higher, and what is something higher? That which includes everybody and excludes nobody. That is the highest. See? Whenever our love is not all inclusive, but it is including only a part, a fraction, a biased love, a biased love will always be destructive. If you see all the saints and sages who lived in this world, worth their name, they have included everybody in the embrace of their love because they have not differentiated somebody is mine and somebody is not mine. What is the reason? Because they have identified themselves correctly. It is the subsequent followers who are creating the differences. See? Therefore, the teacher says, those who are committed to lead the scientific life they have to first of all discover their correct identity. Without discovering our correct identity, our relationship cannot be perfect. And the moment the relationship is correctly understood, all the uh, interactions will be also perfect. And this is what he says, Tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam. So those who are priti purvakam, those who are living under the influence of absolute love and the expression of love is service. See, one day I was in Bangalore and uh, the group of our Sai Baba people, they have called me for some talk. And they have asked me, Swamiji, please talk about seva to all of us. We are doing seva, but we don't know what we are doing. I said, seva is very simple. When the knowledge is in the book, it is heavy. When the knowledge is transferred from the book to the brain, it becomes more heavy. You know, I know Bhagavad Gita, I know Upanishad. Do you know it? It becomes more heavy. And the load of the erudition is worse than load of carrying the library books. When this knowledge is read, collected by us, and when it is properly interacted and matured, the mature knowledge percolates and is seated in the heart. When the knowledge remains in the brain, it is erudition, scholarship, load and bondage. When the same knowledge becomes mature, it percolates to the heart. And thereafter, the knowledge is labeled as love. See? Like kacha am, paka am. The raw mango and the ripe mango. Raw mango is not sweet. The same uh, sourness or bitterness becomes sweet when it matures, ripens. In the same manner, when the knowledge ripens and matures, it doesn't have a place to stay in the head. It percolates, comes down to the heart. And then it accumulates so much that it has no way but to flow out. And when love flows out of our personality through the through two canals of our hand, it is called as service to the society. See? How the whole picture is. When I have discovered my correct identity, to be the absolute conscious reality, then I am no more living at the level of the head. No more I am living at the level of the uh, lower existence. Then I have attained a perfect balance of 
a ripened individual called as a divine expression and divine expression is only one and that is unqualified love and when this unqualified love starts expressing it expresses only in terms of service to tesham satat yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam so such people who are all the time abiding in this absolute reality that they are and this is not a struggle for them it is a natural phenomena because of love please remember this basic principle we are never taught love in any institution take a common example you know when these mothers become first time mothers that time the mother their mothers and the mother in laws 101 instructions are given don't eat this don't eat that don't jump unnecessarily and don't do this thing and don't uh, watch uh, horrifying movies that will affect on your child so many instructions are given but never it is told love your child okay you have to love your child nobody is required to be told now be attentive why because love is a natural experience of every one of us and for the child why the love is so intense because the child is my extension see when i come to discover that i the pure consciousness he is the one who is extended in the form of the things and beings will not there be a natural love for the whole world now be attentive when you love somebody and think that thinking is creative when you hate somebody and think that thinking is destructive see when the saints and sages have love for the society they also think and their thinking is how we can help the world and those who are criminals they also think but their thinking is how can i destroy more and more so thinking is common whether you are a great saint or a sage or you are the terrorist of the highest order both of them have to be extremely intelligent stupids cannot be uh, um, terrorist they have to be extremely alert they have to be extremely capable they have to be extremely sacrificing alas their thinking is towards the destruction and not construction what is the reason they lack love see desham satat yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam and the real love can be only when you recognize yourself reflected in others see for the first time maybe about 30 years before somebody was after me to write an article so i said please write an article for us i said no baba i have never written i don't know how to write no 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 please 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 so i said any message down i'll talk to you and you write that as an article and i went on talking it came out such a beautiful long poetry at a kind of a soliloquy and then it was uh, accepted by that particular magazine and uh, published and then they came in swami ji your article has come out very well and it is here so when i was looking into the magazine the first thing i wanted to see my article see because in that article i am reflected wherever there is an experience of iness or minus love is natural and thinking is creative 
this creative thinking that will lead us to the highest is called as the buddhi yoga and that destructive thinking which takes us to the self destruction is called as buddhi rog the disease of thinking and one is the asset of thinking so dadami buddhi yogam tam so to such people who are mature in their understanding and the maturity of the understanding is in the form of pure love for the total creation such people are able to think in such a manner that they are able to discover the divine grace in and through every experience of our life friends if i want something and if that something i get then by default i say by god's grace everything was all right so by god's grace is a default it has no meaning like you know we receive so many letters from the people uh, respected swami ji by your grace and by the grace of my guru and by the god's grace and by the grace of our elders and by the grace of all the saints and sages So I said, you are disgraced. Whose letter was received? So when something happens with according to our choice, we we oblige the God by recognizing His grace, and then we start thinking. See, I am you know a God caring man. I always remember God. Please remember. Then. something goes wrong krishna this is the fifth floor remember <laughs> head lock tag why the things did not happen according to what i wanted see i happen to meet one uh, gentleman who came to lonawala and he is uh, some relation is studying there a child in some that yoga course so when he came and he spent few days and he says samaji i want to talk to you whenever anybody wants to talk to me i start getting aurubilation i said okay start more than anything it is only telling there is no talking samaji uh, i'll tell you my daily dinacharya i said i don't want to know how does it matter what you do or don't do no 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 i want to tell that means you suffer as a bhagwan prasad <laughs> and samiti every day i read ram charit manas every day i do this japa so many hours every day i do the puja every day i go to temple every day i feed grass to the cow you know in bombay everything is so professionally done the cow and the grass is brought by the people on the doorstep you pay fill out chalo standardization i do all that but i don't know everything is going wrong why i am deleted from god's grace so i ask him i said kindly define god's grace swami ji if this was this way this was this way this was this way then it would have, it would have been better i said that is the whole problem you know poor god he doesn't understand anything what is good for us we all being typical indians we go to the doctor and suggest doctor will you like to give me the antibiotics are baba let the doctor decide isn't it I think you know if you give me this thing kindly also give me the um, vitamins B complex because I am already having acidity and if you want to give me penicillin I am already allergic so the doctor gets frightened of the uh, you know patient my God this fellow knows so much see in the same manner I have done so many things and yet everything is going the wrong way why. why god has forsaken me from his grace in short our understanding of grace is when things happen according to our choice it is god's grace 
when things don't happen according to our choice, it is God's disgrace. And this is where we are not having buddhi yoga. Now what is a buddhi yoga? Buddhi yoga is all that happens in our life, good or bad, is only for our evolution. See? We see at our life between the two pillars of womb and tomb. But God looks at us beyond these two limits of birth and death. And he is trying to improve us, purify us by the treatment of joys and sorrows as required. There was a rock and its sculpture was going. And there are so many stones. If you go to Hyderabad, Hyderabad is the stony land, you know. Big, big boulders and stones all around, like the people. <coughs> so, one sculptor was going and he stopped at one stone, looked at it. Ha, ah, wonderful. And took his hammer and chisel and started every day. Tat, 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 tat. And that time, that rock was constantly cursing. There are so many stones around. I am the most unfortunate one. All the chiseling effect is only for me. What is wrong in me? What sin I have done? But the sculptor is like James Bond. <laughs> you know, yesterday I told you, one person wrote me a letter and asked this question. How will you compare the um, equanimity of Sthita Pragya from Bhagavad Gita and James Bond? <laughs> so, he keeps on chiseling that rock. And with every additional stroke, there is a curse from that rock to this sculptor. Oh God! If I am a God, I will curse you first. But the God, the sculptor, it doesn't stop. He goes on hitting. And one day, that beautiful idol which comes out of it, is taken away with a big procession and established in a big temple. And millions of people come and salute. That time, that idol, that rock says, so many rocks are around, but it is me alone. Who is being worshipped? Who is being taken care of? Who is respected the most? Other pieces of rocks are just not even recognized. People walk over them. Oh Lord, I did not know that time. Friends, please remember, every additional misery in our life is a polishing that is done by the Lord so that He can utilize us for His work. This is called as Buddhi Yoga. Discover the divine grace in and through every experience of our life. Then we are really intelligent. Intelligence is not uh, looting others and becoming yourself happy. No, that is not intelligence. See, dadami buddhi yogam tam, yena maam upayantite, and once our thought becomes God-oriented, then nothing in this world is more important than remembering the Lord. Because good comes, we remember the Lord, bad comes, we remember the Lord, good comes, we remember the Lord, bad comes, we remember the Lord. After some time, good and bad become secondary and remembrance of the Lord becomes primary and after that, remembrance disappears and Lord alone remains. This is called as Buddhi Yoga. Because who is the Lord? Lord is the one who is functioning, supporting the relativity and yet not losing his non-dual existence. There is no other way than this. 
and how do we do this it's a fun you must have seen some movies there was one drama marathi drama long time back prabhakar panshikar i remember the actor to me in a ways i am not he and every time he will come on the stage with a different character play his role and go again another role so when he is supporting so many roles but he is not forgetting that he is the miserable husband of his terrible wife he is not forgetting his identity in the same manner hold on to the absolute that you are and play the game of life this is how all the great masters have done and this is the only way he who has understood this he who is living this knowledge he is a buddhi yogi then the intelligence doesn't become a load therefore dadami buddhi yogam tam yena mam upayantite so please remember in this world every small little thing that is happening in everybody's life has only one purpose and the purpose is going back to your own source but depending upon our buddhi we have a different meaning and definition of the god's grace if somebody is having knee problem terrible knee problem to that kneel the fellow you ask him um uh, how is god's grace on you god's grace will be there if you can do something with my knees okay you replace the knees then he replaces me by god's grace now i am all right so his grace of god was limited to the knees that's it another fellow unable to get married like us all baba ji become baba ji because they fail to get married no other reason failure in the worldly life is the success in the spiritual life so a person who is not getting married for him god's grace means oh god find out some kabutar for me you know i am feeling so much and then one kabutar comes in your life aha by god's grace samiti i found out one no one is an adjective or a noun god knows or a number <laughs> god's grace a person who is poor god's grace i should get money see a person who is body oriented i should live long by god's grace swami ji i am 99 not out god's grace living long life because body i am see emotional swami ji by god's grace my children look after me very well you know they have not kicked me as it <laughs> bhagwan ki daya hai is all god's grace see god's grace is defined according to our buddhi according to our intellect real god's grace is when every event every experience of your life takes you nearer one step to the lord if that is happening then understand then the real buddhi yoga is established dadami buddhi yogam tam so when we go to the mba you know the meaning of mba you all must be doing you are all educated somebody told me once i was in uh, pune one girl came i said hey what are you doing swami ji i am doing mba i said what is the meaning of this mba hey, you don't know i said i know but is it the same meaning what is that you know i said me bekar ahe
No, 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 Swamiji, it's not that many. I was in Bangalore thereafter. There was one World Peace Conference. And in that World Peace Conference, when I went there, a beautiful stage done and all that. And then uh, those people said, Swamiji, how do you like the stage before we go on the stage? I said, why did you bring that kabutar there? You know, the dough they bring to show the peace. Peace bird is dough. I said, do you know this kabutar is the worst kind of bird in the world? You know, it is considered as a very bad omen. Swamiji, please don't tell this on the stage. <laughs> so, when I went there, all oh, that happened, one of my friends, he said, Swamiji, I am having some uh, problem in my business and all that. Can you suggest me something? I said, uh, you practice MBA. He said, what is this MBA? I said, Marwadi Brand Administration. And I gave him the mantra. How to do Marwadi Brand Administration. And within six months, he came out of all the problems that he had. He says, Swami, dear, how do you know this? I say, Sarvagya, Sarvachakti. <laughs> so, the meaning of the Buddhi Yoga is dependent on what is important for us. If the experience of divinity, perpetual, unbroken, all the time, is the most important thing for me, then what is the grace of the Lord? The grace of the Lord, none of the worldly things ever disturb me and my abidance in the absolute experience is never corrupted. Although I am very much living in the midst of the total relativity. That is called as buddhi yoga. Dadami buddhi yogam tam ye namam upayantite. And when we develop our buddhi for earning money, then we will construct a temple to earn money. When we are develop our buddhi for earning money, then we will publish the books for earning money, not for the dissemination of knowledge. When we are trained, when our buddhi is corrupted and dedicated only for the money, 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 then we will have the great katha organization only for collecting money. Look here. Because buddhi is trained like that. Therefore, what is important for us? If for us, the Lord is the most important thing in this world. And if we really are in love with that divine experience, then everything that we do or we don't do will be directed only for one and one without a second purpose of our life to discover the divine presence even in the most ugly experience of our life. And this we cannot understand. This is beyond understanding. So when we want to have the experience which is beyond understanding, you have to have buddhi yoga. That is what is they say. Uh, that bliss or peace which passeth beyond all understanding. This is what is called as buddhi yoga. Ye nama upayantite. And then, sir, how do you do this thing? Now, see how beautiful the teacher says. Tesha me vanu kampartam aham ajnana jamtamaha nashaya myatma bhavastha jnana deepena bhaswata. You know what I do? I illuminate the lamp of wisdom in their heart. They are not philosophers. You know, I recently, last year probably, had been to Pilani, Bits Pilani. And there, they have asked me to talk on half a dozen topics in one, two lectures. So I made a khichdi of the whole thing and spoke. 
and the topic was that i finally coined was religion philosophy and spirituality so religion is that where god is absent philosophy is that where wisdom is absent spirituality is that where there is a perfect synthesis of god and wisdom see philosophy is delayed wisdom like you know we have got these some tablets they are they are release delayed release you take one tablet whole day it goes on releasing the medicine similarly when the married people tell the unmarried people hey don't get married is nothing in that this statement of a married man or this advice of a married man to the unmarried person is a philosophy why he has understood it but little late <laughs> that's why delayed wisdom is called as philosophy that is why all the old people are the best philosophers on the contrary when you grow old you don't grow wise you grow philosophy so ज्ञान दीपेन भास्वता प्लीज रिमेम्बर वेन फिलॉसॉफी इज अप्लाइड इन अवर लाइफ एंड लिव्ड एज एन एक्सपीरियंस इट इज कॉल्ड एज विजडम वेरी सिंपल सो वेन वी हैव कलेक्टेड दिस मच ऑफ नॉलेज दैट द होल वर्ल्ड इज स्टैंडिंग मत हाफ इन मी अलोन विदाउट आई देर इज नो एक्सिस्टेंस पॉसिबल So, if I is the foundation of the total world, and if the world is the extension of the supreme I, where is the place of likes and dislikes, friends and enemy, ours and not ours? Everything dissolves. And when we start living that knowledge in our life, then jnana deepa in a bhaswata. Such a person, the teacher says, "Desham eva nu kampatham." so by sheer love and compassion for such sincere seekers of truth i come in their life in the form of wisdom see bhagwan reveals himself for the sincere seeker in the form of wisdom be very attentive who is a wise man bhagwan sri krishna has defined a number of places the first place he defines gatasu na gatasu sch nanu chochanti panditaha wise man is he who does not grieve for the living or for the dead the grief is for the dead natural no even for the living martha bhi nahi in short if the lord is expressing as wisdom in our bosom we refuse to be miserable in this world very simple equation how do we know whether the lord's grace is showering on us or not how do we know that the buddhi yog is established in our life or not may the whole world be on fire but the equanimity of our wisdom cannot be corrupted if it is on the foundation of this knowledge what was said by the lord etam vibhutim yogam cha mama yo vetti tatvatah then only that wisdom is lived when wisdom is left it is philosophy when philosophy is lived it is wisdom see how beautiful it is the one story you all must be knowing there was a young king who was uh, who just took over from his father after he passed away and then the old minister was with him and the old people have got some or the other habits like i have got the habit of playing with my daddy one lady one girl told me after my lecture in ahmedabad somebody why do you hold on to your daddy i said because you don't have what can i do 
I have to hold on to something. If you have that, I will hold it on. There is no reason. Just a habit. So, old people also have got some habits. Now, this old minister had an habit that uh, anything happens, he used to say, Oh, thank God. Your grace is indeed great. That was his by default, he used to say. So, one day the king was coming down the palace along with this old man. And he, because it was a so big a gown and all that, and freshly become king. So, he toppled and fell down. All the steps he rolled down. And then afterwards, when this uh, old minister went down, he saw that his finger is broken completely and he was in a very miserable condition. So, by default, he said, Thank God, everything is good by God's grace. Now, that king got so angry. First thing he did, put him behind the bar. So, when he was put behind the bar, he said, Thank God, everything is good by God's grace. And then he went after a few days for uh, uh, hunting because the kings can kill only. So he went for hunting the poor animals. And there it so happened he was uh, lost with the, from the group and caught hold by these Kapalikas who offer the human body as a naivedya sacrifice. So they caught hold of this king, gave bath, everything and completely undressed. And then to be offered to the mother Kali. So the Pujari came and started seeing whether it is untouched or it is only used by somebody. And when he started seeing the body, he found left hand small finger is not there. Because it was broken and chopped off. He said, this cannot be offered to the mother because this is used already. Juta Prasad Bhagwan ko nahi chada. So he was not sacrificed, came back. Then the king started thinking, hey, that old man said, all that happens is for the good, God's grace. Really, had my finger been intact, I would have been gone today. Then he goes to the prison. He said, I understand what you said about me. But when I put you behind the bar, you also said the same thing. Thank God, everything is good by God's grace. What is good to you? He said, the best, not only good, why? Had I not been inside the jail, you would have asked me to come with you. And I am intact. So you were saved, but I would have been sacrificed. God's grace is always there. Friends, dadami buddhi yogam tam. This is the buddhi yog. When we are leading every experience of our life in the light of wisdom, when we start living our life lightly in the light of wisdom, we are the wisest people in this world. But what happens? Like in a small room, little bit of something dirty, it starts stinking badly. But when it is a total open space, Nothing ever disturbs. In the same manner, if we come out of the small little experiences of our life and merge with the Lord, we will see our experiences become meaningless. Because without Him, even the bad experience is not possible. Without Him, even the good experience is not possible. So every experience is the reminder of the Lord. See, this also I told you one. Punjabis have got very huge body and bad knees. Because of the huge body, the knees become bad. In Delhi, one old Amma, every time the same question. Why do I have this knee pain? Please tell me. Now what can you tell? Take it lightly. No, no, how can you take it lightly? I said, okay. Answer my question. Simple questions, you can answer. What for the eyes are? For seeing. What for the ears are? For hearing. Knees are for paining. <laughs> That's the only purpose of the knee. There is no other purpose. When you die, they will not pain. So you understand you are still alive. Celebrate life. 
This is called as the wisdom with which we live and when we are able to laugh at ourselves, then the world cannot laugh at you. When you are ashamed of laughing at yourself, then the world gets inspiration to laugh at you. Isn't it? If I laugh at my Gandhi part, you cannot make me miserable on that account. Because I already laughed. See? This is such a simple way of living. So when we start living our life in the light of wisdom, we lead a light life. Bindhas, Bombay ka shabd. Happy go lucky. Don't become serious. The day you learn this art of laughing in spite of the miseries around, you have grown wise. So with age, we need not grow wise. With age, we go grow old. How do we grow wise? When the buddhi yoga is operating, and as a result, from every experience of our life, we learn. The process of learning is continuous. And when you keep on learning from your own experiences of life, you start growing wise and not old. Old people are not wise and wise people are never old. See how simple it is. So, Teshami Vanukam Partham Ahmad Jnana Jam Tamaha Nashayami. And why all these things happens? Because of Ajnanam identity crisis. These things happen, good and bad, in everybody's life. But we feel as if this is the blind end of our life. Have patience, have faith in Him, and lead your life in the light of wisdom. Then you will see, there is no problem whatsoever that can destroy you. After having said all what the Lord has to say, now Arjuna takes over and he says, Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Param Bhavan Purusham Shashvatam Divyam Adi Deva Majam Vibhum Ahustvam Rushayas Sarve Devar Shir Naradastatha Asito Devalo Vyasaha Swayam Chaiva Pravishime Sarvameta Drutam Manne Yan Mam Vadasi Keshava Nahite Bhagavan Vyaktim Vidur Devana Danavaha Swayam Evat Manatmanam Vetatvam Purushottama Bhuta Bhavana Bhutesha Deva Deva Jagatpate Vaktumar Hasya Seshenam Divya Yatva Vihutayaha Yabhir Vibhuti Bhir Lokan Imam Stam Vyapitishthasi Katham Vidyam Aham Yogin Twam Sada Parichintayan Keshu Keshu Chabhaveshu Chintyosi Bhagavan Maya Vistarenat Mano Yogam Vibhuti Mcha Janardanam Bhuyak Kathayatruptirhi Shrunvato Nasti Memrutam In this six seven verses Arjuna is expressing that, O oh Lord, what you have said about you is absolutely true. Like the disciples and the devotees give certificate to the Guru Maharaj. 1008 Mahavandaleshwar. Guru Maharaj never writes. It is the certificate given by the Chelas and the devotees. Isn't it? Pratasmaraniya or Anantashri Vibhushita. This is the certificate given by the disciples to the Guru. The same technique here. Arjun says, Bhagavan, Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitram, Paramam Bhavan. You are the supreme absolute reality where there is no corruption of duality. You are that absolute knowledge. You are that absolute bliss. And you are that immortal divine expression. You are that unborn, all-pervading reality. And thus, 
all the saints and sages say about you so also the devarshi narada and other rishi like asita devala vyasa and you also told the same thing and therefore i accept whatever you have said about you the reality is true and this your aspect of your remaining in the yoga and expressing as the vibhuti is very difficult to comprehend even for the most intelligent people in this world i agree and hey bhagwan only you can know yourself how you are remaining in the absolute and how you are supporting the relative existence and yet you are not getting corrupted or influenced by the relativity bhuta bhavana bhutesha deva deva jagatpate oh the king of the world how you are doing it you will know your ways therefore vaktum arasi asheshena divya yatma vibhutaya therefore oh lord i am requesting you now a time has come i am not able to comprehend the absolute to begin with therefore kindly start instructing me the vibhuti your glory in this world now see be very attentive this is a very simple example which will make your point clear about the absolute and the uh, relative this example i gave you earlier in other context see the teacher or the mother is interested in teaching the child the numbers the sums the totals that is the interest of the teacher and the mother but the child's interest is the chocolates see the interests are different so if that mother or the teacher has to teach summation what they will do first of all find out where is the interest of the child interest of the child is in chocolate so then the child recognizes this chocolate very well then they said what is this this chocolate no this is one chocolate okay 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 give me how does it matter whether you call it one or 10 i am not interested my interest is in chocolate but the teacher says no this is one chocolate say okay this is one chocolate give me now again the teacher takes out another chocolate this is chocolate no what did i tell you okay this is one chocolate slowly slowly that one is given to the child attention of the child is to the chocolate see and then the summation is taught how many chocolates are these this is one chocolate this is one chocolate so these are two chocolates one chocolate plus one chocolate is equal to two chocolates the child says homework is given and homework is given one banana plus one banana how many and the child is serious this way. mother says beta what's the problem problem mama you won't understand it's very difficult uh, mathematics <laughs> what is the problem let me know the teacher asks one banana plus one banana what is the reply how oh, is so simple it is two i knew you will say that what papa says about you is right you just don't understand anything but how it is wrong my dear child one banana plus one banana no one chocolate plus one chocolate is equal to two chocolates our teacher didn't say banana see the his problem is very serious we can never understand that so what the teacher is doing finding out the areas of interest for the child and then slowly leading him to the subtle concepts of mathematics so from the chocolates when you learn the summation you are going from the glory to the yoga see the absolute cannot be understood by us at this stage because we are so much buried in the relativity see how problematic it is so what does scripture tell see the absolute in the relativity 
how it is possible start from your home how pipi pipi namaha you know devi is ikaranta strilingi shabda om devyai namaha isn't it pipi means pati parameshwar start seeing god in the husband samaji don't cut such serious jokes <laughs> seeing god in that husband impossible i can tolerate any insert not this one you know me that means i am ready to see the god in a stone which i have bought but my husband and god it can pass see therefore here the teacher will be giving us this is arjuna's question sir kindly tell me where do i see you you may tell me everywhere god is i see nowhere then tell me some technique by which i will start suspecting the divinity in this total world of relativity therefore he asks vaktum arhasi asheshena divya yatma vibhutaya Oh Lord, where is your glory? Where is your divine glory? Manifest distinctly, kindly show me. And also, Yabir Vibhuti Bihi Lokan Imam Tum Vyakte Dishtasi. And how your glory is manifest in the total world. To understand that the total world is the expression of the absolute reality, you have to start slowly, step by step, step by step. So kindly tell me, how do I know? And also tell me, Katam Vidya Maham Yogin Tvam Sada Parichintayan Keshu Keshu Chabhaveshu Chintyosi Bhagavan Maya Hey Yogin, Hey Bhagavan, kindly tell me, which are those manifestations? where i can start suspecting your presence please tell me that so that i will be able to think about you all the time and don't tell in short okay then vistarena atmano yogam vibhutim cha janardana he janardana janardana means jana means maya the one who creates is called a jana ardana means destruction the one who is the destroyer of the illusion of the duality to that lord that this is made hey janardana kindly tell me vibhutim and yogam now this is very important thing to understand this two words yoga is recognition of the divinity at the level of your own personal immediate experience when we recognize the divinity as our experience it is a yoga and when we are able to uh, recognize the divinity in the total objective world it is a vibhuti and when these two things come together it is called a vibhuti yoga three things so oh lord kindly tell me vistarenat mano yogam uh, yogam विभूतिं च जनार्दन भूज कथय तृप्ति हि श्रुणुमतो नास्ति मे मृतम एंड दिस इज अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग आई एम नॉट टायर्ड ऑफ लिसनिंग टू यू आई एम नो इनफ हो गया इनफ हो गया लेट अस हैव सम कप ऑफ टी नो सी व्हाट हैपेंस भगवान हैज टोल्ड अर्जुन दैट दोस हु हैव लव फॉर दिस they will never get tired now here arjun says i am not tired of listening to you now be very attentive to this very important point this i have and all of us must have suffered when we go to somebody's place and always there is some useless child now for that mother that useless child is the highest achievement of life and when the child starts blabbering something blag 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 Samidhi, do you know what he is telling? As he is telling nothing. Blah blah. It is not a language, not even a Thai language. Samidhi, do you know what he is telling? Mama, I love you. I said, no dictionary can give the meaning. Blah blah blah. Means Mama, I love you. No, 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 Samidhi. What he says, you know, 
Daddy, I don't like you. Ram, Ram. And then slowly the child is growing. Now see, because of love, the meaningless blabbering is honored as an expression of love by the child. See? And then the child starts growing. And then when we go, ah, you know, our children, are, my child is so sweet. What is the sweetness? He can chant Sanskrit shloka. That is the sweetness. The Tameva Mata to say beta. Tameva Mata. The child doesn't say. And their mommy only says everything. And says, see how nicely he said. No, said, not he used it. Now, this particular drama that mother does with every available victim. <laughs> Isn't it? And she repeats it not once, not twice, but hundred times. And yet, she doesn't get bored to tell the same thing again and again and again. Because love for the child. See, I was in uh, one of the universities in States. One professor asked me this question. Since how many years you are giving lectures? I said, many years. I have no uh, service record anywhere. He said, uh, don't you get bored on talking on the same topic all the time? I said, no, I don't get bored. He said, I am teaching philosophy. And I feel sometimes I am getting bored. And probably that is the reason why the student get bored. And therefore, my class begins with 20 students and ends with me only. The glory has gotten, yoga is there. So how come you are able to hold on the audience for such a long time and that to our American students? How come you have so much interest? I said, look here. When you are talking about concepts, you will get bored. When you talk about the self, you will never get bored. See how important it is. Therefore, O oh Lord, tell me, I am not tired of listening. Because when I listen from you, I know you are talking about me. One person asked me this question somewhere. Swamini, what is the reason that we like to be in the company of the Mahatmas? We like to go and attend satsang. What is that we get happiness there? I said, I'll tell you the truth. He said, yes. I said, because only in the satsang and the Mahatmas tell us, that you are Satchidananda Para Brahma Paramatma. Everywhere condense us, isn't it? So at least there is one place where there is a suspicion that we are divine. And therefore we like that. There is no other reason. Therefore, Bhuya Kathayatruktirhi Shrunvato Nasti Me Murtam. I am not tired of listening your immortal words of wisdom. Now, in reply to this inquiry, Sri Bhagavan Vacha, the Lord tells, Hantate katha ishami divya yatma vibhutayaham pradhanyata kuru sreshta nastyanto vistarasyame. Hantate katha ishami. Come on, Arjun, be ready to listen now. He is not. Karmanne vadikaraste maafale shukadajana. I have asked the question, now you reply, I sleep. Don't activate. Don't become a catalyst. Become a participant when I am telling you something. Hantate kathaishami. Please remember, the process of learning demands complete participation of the teacher and the student together. And this complete togetherness is possible only under two conditions. Condition number one, the student has uh, extreme love, faith, reverence for the teacher and the subject matter. And second, the teacher has absolute love, respect and honor and compassion for the student. When these two things come together, then only the transfer of knowledge is possible. Otherwise, if the teacher is teaching and a student has this attitude, 
देखते हैं ट्राई मारते हैं सो वेन यू आर जस्ट ट्राइंग टू पास टाइम लेट एस सी वॉट इज एज बिकॉज सो मेनी महात्मा हर्ड एंड केप दिप नथिंग कैन चेंज With this attitude, we will never learn. Similarly, when the teacher is giving the lecture, if he has this attitude, all these same fellows, you know, I don't know whether they understand or not, whether they are coming to be benefited. Anyway, they are come to pass time. I have to pass time. Paras param passa yanta. So the teacher is passing the uh, students, and students are passing the time, and time pass show ho raha hai. no so here the teacher says my dear arjun i shall definitely tell you be attentive and listen with complete involvement you know whenever we are not able to grasp in one go we require a lot of polishing there is one story which comes in uh, त्रिपुरा रहस्य देअर द डिसाइपल इज परशुराम भगवान एंड ही हैज डिस्ट्रॉइड दिस क्षत्रिय ट्वेंटी वन टाइम्स एंड अगेन रामचंद्र केम एंड देअर फॉर ही वॉज सो डिस्गस्टेड अगेन कम ही वेन टू किल रामा बट ही वॉज डिफिटेड वेन ही वॉज डिफिटेड ही बिकेम डिस्गस्टेड एंड वेन टू मलयगिरी पर्वत एंड वेन ही वेन देअर then he came across one saint in the very vicinity of the saint he pay experience divine bliss and he went and asked sir what is this i am experiencing i was so disturbed tortured please tell me what it is that mahatma explains sir my experience is exactly what you are telling but i am not able to understand what you told me will you please repeat that mahatma says look here you are such an intelligent student you know and i am a dumbo mahatma i am not able to come to your level of intelligence therefore you go to dattatre bhagwan he is a very good teacher and he passes on that student to that dattatre bhagwan and then he goes on telling him stories after stories after stories so when bhagwan is telling hantate kathaishami come on i am going to tell you be attentive and in one go you catch it don't again and again repeat 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 you know that is such a tragedy if somebody asks you to like in the many places they ask swami ji that joke you told you know in that lecture no in today's lecture will you please repeat it no i don't know which lecture is telecast and what joke it is and jokes are not told ha huh? there was a sardar ji it's not a joke it should happen in the flow of thought that is called as wisdom and humor so hantate kathaishami be very attentive i shall tell you my divine glory divya yatma vibhutaya pradhanyata you have asked me to tell in exhaustive details i am sorry is not possible i shall tell you the most important one which will catch your mind pradhanyata guru shreshta why you are not telling exhaustively because na asti antaha me vistarasya because there is no end to my glory now tell me if we go and talk to ocean and tell him uh, ocean bhagwan kindly tell us all about all the waves in the past all the waves in the present and all the waves in the future that are going to come because you know everything so kindly tell us about all the waves what the ocean will say ah uh, yeah that's good question you ask but i cannot tell you all the waves about everything in short i can tell you because there is no end to the past present and the future therefore pradhanyata guru shreshta nastyanto vistarasya me now he starts this aham atma gudakesha sarva bhuta chay sthitaha aham adish madhyam cha bhuta anamant eva cha now the first glory of the absolute is through the expression of the relative individual meaning 
Every one of us is the mobile temple of the divinity. Never condemn, curse yourself. As we should not condemn and curse anybody in this world, we should never condemn and curse ourselves. Never say that dirty prayer, Papo ham papa karma. Why papa? Why not dad? You know, Gujaratis, when they call dad in USA, they say dead. Because you know, snacks are called a snake. No? Hall is called a hole. So dad is called the dead. He is my dad. Still alive? Yes. <laughs> so, this papo ham papa karma, I am get out of that negativity. Aham atma guda kesha. When the Lord is ready to say that I am residing in the heart of everyone, we deny his presence in our heart. There cannot be more sin than this. Therefore, start seeing my glory in yourself first. Sarva bhuta It is not only among the Brahmins or Kshatriyas or, or um, Muslims or the Christians. No. In the heart of every being, the same reality is throbbing in the form of life. Aham Atma Gudakesha. Gudakesha Arjun. Why is called as Gudakesha? Because Arjun was a person who had conquered his sleep. Therefore, it's called as Guda Akesha. Conquering sleep means what? I can sleep anytime. <laughs> no. Conquering sleep means he who is all the time alert. The best example in the life of Arjuna comes when he was shooting at the uh, eye of the bird. He was the only student who said that other than the eye of the bird, I see nothing. That single pointed attention of alert, vigilant and quiet mind is called as conquering the sleep. So, hey Guda Kesha, first recognize that you are the same reality as a listener to me, which I am the reality as a speaker to you. Aham Atma Guda Kesha, Sarva Bhuta Shayastitaha and Aham Adishcha Madhyamcha. Bhutanam anta evacha. I am the beginning, I am the middle, and I am the end. The ocean says, I am the beginning of every wave, I am the middle of every wave, and I am the end of every wave. Because waves are abuses implanted on the ocean. Jiva is an abuse given to the God. See, in Bhagavad today, we were studying. When our attention is on the samskar, impressions on the mind, then we consider ourselves to be good and bad. But when our attention is on the conscious principle, which is throbbing through us in and through every experience, then it is called as the jiva. So instead of getting lost into the impressions on the mind, focus attention on that conscious principle which is illuminating all the experiences. And when who is the jiva is inquired, you come to discover that you are the same reality which is in and through every good and bad experience. And with any experience, this reality does not get influence. The illuminator is never influence. Isn't it? When I see the different colors and forms, eyes are not influenced. When I hear all the words, ears are not influenced. When I hear so much of wisdom, mind is not influenced. <laughs> Untouched. And that is the secret. Whenever you learn in a uh, satsanga, you are growing wise. But when you only collect information so that you can blast the same joke in another lecture, then you are collecting impressions. Therefore, Aham Adishcha Madhyamcha Bhutanam Anta Evacha. And he continues further. This will take in our tomorrow's concluding class. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnaat Purnamudachate.
पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओं